Good afternoon. Friends, family, and guests, welcome to the 2018 Lake Washington Institute of Technology Commencement Exercises. If able, please rise for our processional.
Thank you. You may be seated. Good afternoon. I am Dr. Ruby Hayden, Vice President of Student Services. Welcome to the 2018 Lake Washington Institute of Technology Commencement Ceremony. Thank you for joining us as we celebrate the remarkable achievements of our students. Today's celebration marks a fundamental transition in the lives of our students as they depart Lake Washington Institute of Technology for careers and higher education. Members of the class of 2018, we honor your accomplishments and congratulations. To begin our celebration, we ask that you please rise as you are able and join Maisha Wongren, Lake Washington Institute of Technology Coordinator of Outreach and Recruitment and member of the Seattle Women's Chorus, who will lead us in the singing of our national anthem. Please join me in the singing of our national anthem. Oh, say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star-spangled banner yet wave or the land Thank you, Maisha. Please be seated. I would like to introduce our members of the Board of Trustees and the Lake Washington Executive Team and the Lake Washington College Foundation Vice President and our distinguished guests. I will ask each of them to please stand and remain standing. Please hold your applause until all have been introduced. Our college trustees are appointed by the governor to serve the, as the governing board of our college. With us this afternoon are our trustee members, Bruce Reed, Anne Hamilton, Daryl, and Daryl Mitsunaga. We are also joined by our college foundation president, Diane Helsig. The college's executive team is led by president, Dr. Amy Morrison Goings and she is supported by Vice President of Administrative Services, Bill Thomas, Vice President of Instruction, Dr. Elliot Stern, Associate Vice President of Instruction, Dr. Susie Ames, Executive Director of Human Resources, Nina Park, our Director of Communications, Leslie Shattuck, our Director of Institutional Research, Kathy Copeland. We also have distinguished guests in the audience. Teddy Overlease, Vice President of the Lake Washington Technical College Foundation, and our Lake Washington Technical College Foundation Directors, Kate Butcher 
Shelley Dean, Bill Shelby, and Diane Toomey. Thank you for joining us today to celebrate our students' academic achievement. Next, I would like to introduce our exceptional employees. Will the directors and deans please stand and be recognized? Will our faculty members please stand and be recognized? And will our many staff who are working mostly at the edges of commencement today, would you please stand and be recognized? Thank you. These are the individuals who work with our students on a daily basis to help them achieve their educational goals. Thank you for the contributions you have made to our students and our graduation candidates with us here today. It is now my pleasure to introduce Rosa Wade, a member of the Lake Washington Institute of Technology faculty in the nursing program, who will deliver the faculty address to our graduation candidates. Congratulations, class of 2018. And thanks to all in attendance. Thank you, students, for allowing Lake Washington Tech to, gu to guide you and to help you in your discovery. Thank you, friends and family, who have helped these graduates reach their goals. Thank you, faculty and administrators, for creating pathways for success. I stand here as a faculty speaker not because I'm a great leader or even a charismatic entertainer. I am here because I genuinely care for each one of you that are graduating, and I care about your future. I believe those of you graduating today have done marvelously well by seeking and acquiring knowledge, and I anticipate you will continue to do well as you follow in your journeys of discovery. Lake Washington Tech has provided great environments for learning. Learning which leads to employment and learning which launches careers. As an instructor at this college, I know there is a tremendous amount of knowledge being shared. Knowledge that I want to know. I would love to participate in horticulture so I could perfect my garden. I would love to spend time in automotive so I could fix my own car. I would love to spend time in computer sciences so I could develop my own web pages. The amazing programs at Lake Washington Tech have created this eager group of graduates ready to set the books aside and ready to embark on a new adventure. Yet, as each of you redirect, consider a proverb to the wise, which states, hold on to instruction, do not let it go, guard it well for it is your life. The knowledge you have discovered will guide you. However, as many of you have come to realize, you can never stop learning. You must continue to store knowledge, because knowledge is not finite, and the mind is not limited in its ability to learn and create. Realistically, each of you have so much more to grasp to become experts in your field. If you are prudent, you will continue to seek knowledge and embrace the importance of lifelong learning. You have persevered in this journey of discovery and have accomplished so much. You have been challenged to ask questions, find solutions, transform your thinking, and this has not been an easy path for some of you. Yet because you embrace knowledge and instruction and learning, you are forever changed. You have discovered what you previously did not know 
and you have open doors that were previously not open for some of you. Some of you are already gainfully employed. Many of you will soon enter the careers of your dreams. And some of you have chosen to continue on the pathways of discovery to other universities and colleges. And yet I pause here to earnestly declare to each of you that wherever you are at this time, at this point in your journey, it is my sincere hope that you become successful. I use the word successful, but it is necessary to ponder that word. What is that word success? Well, Webster defines the success as a favorable or desirable outcome. This definition of success has no apparent restrictions, no limitations, no time limit, and yet eventually each of you will define your own personal meaning of success and summarize your own conclusions of a favorable and desirable outcome. I did a quick Google search and found a list of the most successful people in the world. The list includes computer geniuses, great politicians, industry leaders, military leaders, religious leaders, artists, athletes, and so on. The point being, there is not a single profession that dominates success, and success does not always mean great wealth and great honor. Though most of us would like to have wealth and honor, I would hope that before you become so busy diligently pursuing your successful careers, that you linger right here in this moment, where you are, and know that you have not come this far on your own. Will you remember those who have walked with you and those who have instructed you? Will you thank those who have encouraged you and supported you in this journey? Will you someday be able to do the same for others in their journey? Will you know when you are successful? I have heard my father talk about his life. He rose out of the barrios, out of the slums of Puerto Rico, to become a director of VA hospitals. He raised eight children, and he stayed married for 61 years. And when he talks about his success, he talks most about his lifelong love, my mother, and his eight healthy children that are still miraculously alive. Success can be great, even if you touch the life of just a few. So look around you and see, there are so many people that want the best for you. They want you to be successful. Consider these people. Be thankful and strive for that success. Strive for what is best and ask yourself, are my goals good? Are they just? Are they honest? Are they true? Are they beautiful? And do my, declare, my goals declare a purpose not only for improving myself, but also for improving the lives of those around me? This is a wonderful moment, a time of celebration for a job well done. And as I conclude, I want to challenge each of you to continue your pursuit of knowledge, choose to do good, and diligently strive to achieve what you finally discover to be a favorable and desirable outcome. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Wade. I now have the privilege of introducing our student speaker. Amanda Pelly joins us today as a graduation candidate of the Bachelor of Technology in Applied Design. She has served the college as a campus life activity programmer the Associated Student Government Vice President, and recently the 2018 Associated Student Government President. Good morning, esteemed administrators and faculty, scholarship donors, dear parents, and beloved friends. Hi, Dad. We couldn't have made it here today without you. For the, students, for the students and the audience who know me, you may be dreading these next six minutes of my speech, expecting me to continue my regular rhetoric of telling students to get involved in their academic experience. Do more with your time. Invest in exploring your ethics and align yourself with the social justice cause you believe in. While those things are incredibly important to me and our society, 
that's actually not the story I'm here to share today. Today I want to get real and share a little bit about my personal journey and what being a student of Lake Washington has done for me. When we look back at the fall of 2016, when many of us started school, we can mark the era with many distinct cultural events. The release of Pokemon Go, the unfortunate death of David Bowie, and of course, the 45th president. Oh, sorry, for those of you that are parents of young children, this is a time when your st world stopped being everything Zootopia and started being all things Moana. For me, the fall of 2016 marked starting a baccalaureate degree program, a dream I never thought I'd come close to starting, let alone achieving. Standing before you today, moments from being a college graduate with a four-year degree seems incredibly surreal, considering where I started. When I started school in 2014, I was full of fear. I had fears I wasn't smart enough. I had fears it'd be too expensive. I had fears I wouldn't fit in. And what if I didn't like what I was learning? Part of my fears was a belief that one day someone would realize I didn't belong on a college campus. And not just that like I didn't belong, but that I probably shouldn't be allowed to be here. Prior to coming to college, I led a life full of crime, drug addiction, and homelessness. When I started school, I had a warrant for my arrest for shoplifting. I knew about the warrant, but I was really focused on fixing myself and building a foundation I could stand on before addressing the past I was trying to separate myself from. But I can remember almost everything about the day my deepest fear was actualized. The day started as any other horrible Tuesday. The kind where you wake up with a tension headache already going on, like right here. You try to go about your normally da daily activities just to promptly drop your toothbrush in the toilet and realize there's no taming the mess that has become of your hair. You choose to bypass many of the grooming activities just to get out the door. And you realize you have no idea where the shoes are you wore the day before. You hit every red light on the way to school, and by the time you get there, you are so fed up. And then it hits you. Your day hasn't really even started yet. So yeah, it was that kind of Tuesday on the way to school. I kept telling myself it was stress overload. I just needed to get to work, get some details organized for my coming events, and the day would get better. By 10 o'clock, it wasn't getting any better, folks. My small attention headache had turned into a full-blown throbbing migraine with bouts of nausea. I ambushed my boyfriend during his break from class and requested he take me home. He grabbed his bag and we hopped in the car. That's about the only thing that went right that day. I distinctly remember him being in an annoyingly good mood. He started the car, turned the radio way up, and proceeded to pull out of the school parking lot. I wasn't having any of it. I told him no radio, roll down all the windows, turn up the air, and please just drive calm. You're not playing Forza. There was silence in the car for about 30 seconds, and then in the most ominous tone, he said, you're not going to like this. As we were pulling out of the parking lot, a lovely Kirkland PD officer noticed I wasn't wearing my seatbelt, and we were being pulled over. Upon running my ID, he quickly arrested me and sent me to the South Correctional Jail in SeaTac. Sick as a dog, totally defeated, and yet again, full of fear about what would happen next. I spent two nights there, missing a few major class assignments and several large responsibilities I had at my on-campus job. When I was released, you see, running away was so deeply rooted in my being, visualizing doing anything else was difficult. Walking onto campus my first day out of jail was one of the hardest things I've ever had to do. It meant accepting that no matter how many steps I took in the right direction, I couldn't erase the past I had spent walking a path of bad decisions. I'd been working hard at being a 4.0 student and doing something different with my life. But in that moment, none of it seemed to matter. I was sure I would lose my job and be told for some reason my record now disqualified me from being a student. So with nothing left to lose, I openly shared what happened with my boss and student programs. For once in my life, in a shameful situation, I was met with genuine support. She helped clarify for me, I hadn't committed a new crime. I was experiencing the consequences of my past actions, and that's a big part of moving forward. 
Her response to my situation, as it had developed in my mind, was to ask me how she could help and what the college could do to support me in my efforts, encouraging me to continue building the foundation of my future. For the first time, I felt I could stop being afraid. Being afraid I wasn't good enough, being afraid I couldn't do it, being afraid I didn't belong in college. The support I received from Sheila, really that beautiful lack of judgment, allowed me to blossom and find true acceptance of myself. I opened my eyes to the possibility that the world could be a different place than I thought, and there was a spot for me in it. This collision of acceptance, being honest about who I used to be, and who I was trying to be, allowed me to see a different outcome to my story, a story that could include a bachelor's degree and being an outstanding member of society. Now, this may be my own unique experience, but I'm not alone in experiencing like Washington changing what's possible in a lifetime. I know every graduating student has had a moment when an administrator, instructor, or fellow student reached out to offer them support. I mean, we all figured out how to apply for graduation, right? As the Athea Gibson quote reads in the cafeteria, no matter what accomplishments you make, somebody helps you. I have friends out here today who are not just receiving their college degree, but also their high school diploma, something many of them lied about when starting college, not realizing the college has their back. If you don't have one, the college will gladly award you one when you complete your AA program. I know there are many students graduating today who struggled in their classes every step of the way. Let me tell you, the lessons we've learned here are not all reflected in our GPA. Our GPA does not show our ability to balance children, chemistry tests, and laundry. Our GPA does not reflect our ability to write a research paper while suffering from the flu and overcoming financial challenges. Our GPA has not, does not reflect how like Washington has changed our lives. I hope when you look back, you are more proud of the challenges you've helped other students overcome and the fears you've faced here than the grades you've earned. In the beautiful words of David Bowie, I really wanted nothing more than anything else to contribute in some way to the culture I was living in. Congratulations, Lake Washington graduating class of 2018. May we go forward. Now, it is my honor and privilege to introduce Dr. Amy Morrison Going, the president of Lake Washington Institute of Technology. Great job, Amanda, and thank you once again for reminding us why we all love working here at Lake Washington Institute of Technology. Thank you. Good afternoon, graduates, honored guests, faculty, staff, friends and family. It is a great day. It is my favorite day of the year. Today begins a new chapter for you graduates. You've worked so hard to overcome many obstacles. You kept the end in mind when it got difficult. You overcame life's barriers and kept moving forward. And now you are here today at your graduation. We knew you'd do it. When you had doubt, we saw promise. Through the long hours of classes and studying, you've made strong connections with each other, our faculty and staff, and to the college. As a college community, we felt that connection from the moment you walked through our doors. You know our enrollment services, financial aid, the foundation, and the library staff the Rise and Veterans Center and advising staff. You know our faculty and they know you. I'm so proud to work with colleagues on this stage and in the audience who each and every day live our mission of preparing students for today's careers and tomorrow's opportunities. Our faculty and staff will continue to be great resources for you after you graduate today. 
I'd like to once again take a moment to recognize my good colleagues, our faculty and staff, for their unwavering dedication and support of our students. Thank you for all you do. The connection our faculty and staff have to industry is significant. It's these connections that bring industry leaders regularly to our classrooms, provide students with the latest technologies, and create direct access to internships and jobs. This isn't new to Lake Washington Tech. We've been doing this for more than 65 years. Many people call this approach career-connected learning. We call it the Lake Washington Tech way. It's what we do and what we have done for decades, and it's at the core of who we are. Today, I, it is my pleasure to share with you one of the stories of our graduates who knows the power of the Lake Washington Tech Connection. Monica Shoemaker is graduating today with her Applied Associate's Degree in Social and Human Services. After she was unable to continue her career as a hairstylist due to a work-related injury, she found her true calling and career, working with those in our community battling addiction. In recovery herself, she knows firsthand the positive impact she can have on the lives of others. Monica plans to start LW Tech's new Applied Bachelors in Behavioral Health Care this fall, and she recently interned at an all-women's inpatient treatment facility, where she hopes to return as part of her bachelor's program. Like many of our students, once they arrive at Lake Washington Tech, they are empowered to achieve more. Monica is a member of the 2018 Phi Theta Kappa All Washington Academic Team. Phi Theta Kappa is the Community College National Honor Society. She was recognized this year with a Phi Theta Kappa Gold National Scholarship, where she was one of 50 students from around the country to receive this recognition. The Washington State Employees Credit Union Scholarship and the Washington State Association of College Trustees Scholarship, where she was one of two recipients from the state to receive this scholarship. Monica has certainly demonstrated the importance of personal connection and how it could lead to a transformative career. Monica, would you please stand so we can recognize you and all of your accomplishments? I know her proud mom is in the audience. I have the pleasure of being at the All Washington Academic Team ceremony this March with her and her mom. So congratulations, mom, as well. <laughs> Graduates, you are prepared for what's next. You have the skills, the strength, and the knowledge to do all you dream about as you enter into this next phase of your life. Whether your higher edu education journey comes to an end today or you're ready to embark on the next phase of your journey with your bachelor's or master's degree, you have accomplished so much already. You have made a difference, not just in your life, but in the lives around you. Take a moment to take this in. Look around you. You are surrounded by your support system those who believe in you and who have encouraged you every step of the way. All of us in this room today believe in you and have encouraged you, and we could not be more proud of you today. So now it is time to turn the page and open the next chapter of your life. You are ready for whatever is next, and I personally cannot wait to see all that you accomplish. Congratulations, class of 2018. Now I have the distinct honor to introduce our distinguished speaker today, Michael Schutzler, who is the CEO of the Washington Technology Industry Association. Michael is an entrepreneur, engineer, self-proclaimed science geek. I checked with him first before I uh, said that. Uh, and first-generation immigrant. Before joining the WTIA, Michael led the merger of Live Mocha 
a community of 17 million language learners with the popular education software company, Rosetta Stone. He also built Classmates.com into the first profitable social media application and transformed online marketing at Monster.com and grew the online gaming business at Real Networks to become a global leader. He teaches part-time at the University of Washington Foster School of Business, serves on several boards, and is a member of the Lake Washington Tech President's Advisory Council. A successful internet entrepreneur, lead angel investor, and veteran executive coach, Michael has personally invested in 24 companies, served as a coach and advisor to more than 100 executives, and has raised over 50 million in private financing. Please join me in welcoming a very good friend to LW Tech, Michael Schutzler. Thank you, Dr. Goings. Um, I love bagpipes, how about you? I was getting a little choked up listening to the bagpipes, and then I listened to Amanda, and I started to lose it. And I thought, God damn it, get a grip. You got a speech to give. So um, I'm going to do my best. This is my very first commencement speech. Um, I do a lot of public speaking, but this is the first time I've had to stand in front of um, a group like you. And you do look marvelous today. Give yourself a round of applause. So being a commencement speaker has given me an enormous amount of performance anxiety because I want to do a good job for you. So I reflected on my own moment in your shoes. The problem is I can't remember a single thing that speaker said. Was it a man or a woman? No idea. Famous, not famous? I have no idea. So just thinking about my own commencement speech turned out to be an empty well. Of course, I'm 56 years old and it was a long time ago. And at my age, lapsed memory is acceptable. At least that's what they tell me. I asked some people who graduated just a few years ago to see what made their commencement speech really awesome. And they didn't remember either. <laughs> so I was kind of stuck. And then it hit me. You won't remember me or anything I say. <laughs> Fantastic. I get to say whatever the hell I want. So I'm going to keep this short and sweet and uh, to the point, and let's have a little fun. The first thing I want to share with you is um, uh, something that's kind of an ugly truth as you embark on your life after Lake Washington. You have no control over outcome. Sorry. Now, I, I've looked at all of the different degrees and certificates and I've gotten to know uh, quite a bit about what this school has been doing over the last five years. And some of you may be thinking, what did he just say? I just invested my time, my energy, my money into getting this degree or certificate. I made this happen. So excuse me, Mr. Commencement Speaker, whoever the hell you are. I do control outcome. I'm sorry, no you don't. Let me explain with an example. I love to cook, have been for a long time. I pick the ingredients, I pick the recipe, I choose the tools, I choose the timing, I even get to choose who my kitchen buddy's gonna be. I even get to and choose whom I invite to dinner. But despite almost 50 years of practice, once the cutting and the seasoning and the good stuff of cooking begins, the outcome is not mine. The composition of vegetables changes every single day. If you ever bought an avocado, you know what I'm talking about. You have no control. Oven thermostats fail. I have found not once, not twice, but many times because I have a very expensive oven and it's stupid. <laughs> My kitchen partner might be in a bad mood. Happens on a regular basis. Might not be me, but it might be me. I'm not really sure. Even if I'm the only person in the kitchen and everything's running smoothly and the Everything's going according to plan. The tastes and the moods of the people who are coming to dinner are different every time, even if it's the same damn family members every day. So I have complete control over my effort to make a good meal, but I have exactly zero control over how the meal is received. That depends on other people. The outcome isn't mine. 
And this truth, it turns out, works out in every aspect of life. As you've heard, I've started several businesses and I've actively invested in more than two dozen, actually. I've launched and learned that launching a business is just like cooking a meal. You plan, you prepare, you get good resources, you get buddies to help you get the thing off the ground. And then once you've launched the business, you find out that there are a lot of people that are working on things you have no control over. Also, the market conditions shift regularly, the economy shifts regularly, customer needs change from the time you start the product to the actually launch the product, and competitors will come and go and can't even begin to talk about the rate of change of technology. So you do have complete control over your effort to build a business just like you do in cooking a meal, but you have exactly zero control over whether or not the business is going to succeed. That always depends on other people. The outcome isn't yours. Now maybe you're a musician or a dancer or an actor and you can control your effort. You can rehearse and train and even perform perfectly. And you have a gift to play an instrument, show up on stage authentically and 100% be there. And you think, yeah, that's why I'm great at what I do. And you probably are. But you have no control over whether or not the other artists on the stage are going to be any good either or whether the lighting crew does their job or the sound system works, and you have even less control over whether or not the audience likes what they hear or see. The effort is yours. The outcome is not. So why am I belaboring this point? Because you can't build anything of value in this world alone. You must have the support and cooperation of other people. And as soon as you have even one human being working with you, the outcome your, of your effort is subject to other people and other factors outside your control. How many nurses or nurses aides here? Let's see it. Yeah, right? Welders? Yeah, I saw you. Damn right. Right. Technicians? Accountants? Yeah, I saw a lot listed in there. It's a good thing because there's a huge need for accounting. You just spent years studying and learning skills from experts to get a degree or certificate. And now you have the privilege to do that job. And exactly none of you will be working alone. All of you will be working with other people and serving other human beings in your job. So for each of you, yes, effort is crucial to your job. But the outcomes are always dependent on other people. And there's really fantastic news here. Because no matter what you do, no matter how expert or experienced you are, no matter what your age is, the really awesome good stuff in life happens when your plans fail. When the outcomes you hope for don't appear. Because in that moment, you discover your true self. So I got three things that, if you can remember anything in the speech, are worth actually remembering. Doubt, faith, courage, in that order. First, doubt. Today we mark your graduation. Congratulations. Yeah, no applause that time, right? <laughs> Curious to see what I say next because I've got them hanging on the end here. My son just graduated last weekend. I was very proud. Despite the fact that he already has a job, he's still filled with doubt about rent because in Denver, rent is going up like it is in Seattle. His girlfriend, he also has doubt about. She's been, they've been dating together for three years. It's unclear whether or not that's going to continue. He has a brand new roommate, doesn't know anything about him. He's got doubt. He's actually got doubt about whether he has the ability to do the job he now has. And if you don't have any doubt in this particular moment, you are in denial. <laughs> if you don't have a job, it might take a while. If you do have a new job, you may discover the new job sucks. If you can afford a place to live, is this Seattle? Six months from now, maybe not. <laughs> Today, we're at peace with North Korea, allegedly. Tomorrow, I don't know. <laughs> Today, we are at odds with, get this, China and Germany and Canada over trade. Crazy, right? What's that mean for our economy next year? Does anybody know? If you do, please let me know. We live in an unstable unruly, rapidly shifting world, and it's perfectly reasonable, and I would argue today, it is necessary to have great doubt. Because doubt is necessary because it means you aren't sure. Doubt means you are still paying attention and learning. 
Doubt is your friend. It's not something to be avoided. Doubt gives you the opportunity to create meaning in your life through the effort you make in each moment of uncertainty, which brings me to faith. I don't mean religion. Whether you believe in Yahweh or Allah or Jesus or God or any other creator, in the end, you have free agency and you must choose your own actions. You have each, all of you here, invested in academic and skills training. Many of you already have a ton of experience and face plenty of doubt already. We just heard one great story of a student with a ton of doubt. You're going to continue to face uncertainty the rest of your life. So please have faith in your ability to see the world as it is in each moment and determine with your own heart and own mind what is the best effort you can make right now. How do you build a better world in this moment? Have faith in your training and your experience and know this, that your good effort already adds substantial value to this suffering world regardless of any outcome that you may be hoping for, the effort is already enough. Which finally brings me to courage. So when faced with doubt, we can all be afraid to act. I was shaking before I stood up here. That's part of the deal, right? That fear comes from a desire to control the outcome. Our ego wants to score the goal, close the deal, get the call back, hear the applause, feel the smiles of those whom we serve. But if you focus on the effort itself and not the thing you want as an outcome, then fear dissipates. Last Monday, I was in a 70-mile paddleboard race from Tacoma to Port Townsend. That's kind of stupid, right? <laughs> Well, that's what my wife thought anyway. <laughs> Sorry, dear, I had to call you out. The night before the race, I shook with trepidation, despite the fact that I'd spent six months training and planning and preparing for this thing. That anxiety that I felt is doubt born of a desire to achieve the outcome I wanted, and in my case, I wanted to do this thing in 20 hours. Once the race started, fear was gone. The wind was against us almost the entire way. The tides, of course, were against us half that time. But there was no fear. Just press onward. What matters in any endurance race is the effort, one motion at a time. For many hours, regardless of the circumstance, and a relentless will to improve this moment right now over the last one. Of course, crossing the finish line did feel immensely satisfying. But those hours of effort during the 70 miles taught me a hundred times more about myself than crossing the finish line. Your life is an endurance race. It's not a sprint. It starts now. So hear me clearly. Embracing doubt doesn't mean don't hope. It doesn't mean don't plan or don't try. On the contrary, it means hope big, plan well, try boldly. Because if the outcome is what you hoped for, then please be grateful, it's not yours, it's a gift. And if the outcome is what you wanted, then please have faith that the effort that you made already created great value. This is the source of true courage. Many of you have already shown enormous courage. You took the step, the bold step, to go back to school and to reboot a career. Some of you chose really challenging majors or certificate programs to expand your opportunities in life. You already know that courage isn't just for big moments in your life or some famous president or leaders in history. Courage happens every day you get up and choose to build a better future in the face of the doubt that you have. Doubt, faith, courage, that order. These three things give you the power to build a meaningful life in an unstable world. Choose to do the things that are difficult. Be bold. Pay attention to right now and make a great effort. And have faith that your effort alone already creates great meaning and great value to this world, regardless of the outcome. It's been an honor to stand up here with you today. Graduates of June 2018, congratulations on completing this leg of your journey. Embrace doubt. Have faith in the value of your effort. Be courageous enough not in spite of 
but especially because you might fail. Now go out and build a great world, one moment and one effort at a time. Onward. Thank you. Thank you, Michael, for your inspiring words. It is my pleasure to introduce Diane Helsig, President of the Lake Washington Technology Foundation, who will present our Distinguished Alumni Award. Diane is a retired software company founder. Diane and her husband, past Foundation Board Director Dick Helsig, share a passion for student scholarships and have generously funded the Dick and Diane Helsig Endowed Scholarship at Lake Washington Institute of Technology. The Distinguished Alumni Award is presented to a Lake Washington Tech graduate who has brought distinction to the college. Established by the Office of the President in 2013, this is the highest honor that the institution bestows upon an alum in recognition of professional accomplishment and service to the college. The recipient for this year, this year's award is Kathy England. <laughs> Kathy earned a Bachelor of Arts degree in French language and literature from the University of Oregon in 1990. Kathy enjoyed studying French yet had a strong desire for a career focused on helping people attain, maintain, or recover optimal health and quality of life. To that end, Kathy enrolled in the nursing program at LW Tech in 2010. Kathy excelled at LW Tech, benefiting from the program's small class size, state-of-the-art learning labs, clinical experiences, and opportunities. Kathy graduated from LW Tech with her associate's degree in nursing in 2012, and then went on to earn a Bachelor of Science in Nursing at the University of Washington Bothell. She holds a maternal, newborn nursing certi certification from the National Certification Corporation and is a member of Sigma Theta Tau International Society of Nursing. Kathy has also been active in her community, serving as a volunteer with Program for Early Parent Support, the Seattle King County Public Health Medical Reserve Corps, and the Girl Scouts of Western Washington. Today, Kathy is employed in her dream job as a registered nurse specializing in labor and delivery at Swedish Medical Center, Issaquah Campus. To quote, I wouldn't be where I am today without LW Tech. Kathy said, I met my current manager through an innovative senior practicum experience offered by LW Tech. I am forever grateful for the stellar faculty and terrific nursing education. Kathy and her husband Perry England are staunch supporters of workforce development and education. In 2017, Kathy and Perry traveled to Switzerland alongside Governor Jay Inslee and LW President Amy Morris Goings, and a delega delegation of business, education, and government groups to learn about the Swiss approach to apprenticeship. Like many LW Tech students, Kathy juggled parenting and academics at the same time. Kathy's two children, Zachary and Sophie, were eight and three years of age during Kathy's journey to become a nurse. Today, 
They are 13 and 19 and extremely proud of their mother. Kathy, could you come up? Congratulations, Kathy. We are continually inspired by the achievements of our graduates like yourself and those here today. In particular, today I am humbled as we celebrate and recognize the success of students who have completed their educational goals at Lake Washington Institute of Technology. Our students are graduating with a variety of credentials today. High school equivalency diplomas, high school diplomas, certificates of completion, certificates of proficiency, associate's degrees, and applied bachelor's degrees. You will also notice that many of our students are wearing honor regalia as a testament to their commitment to academic rigor and college involvement. These honor or achievement cords are described in detail in our programs. We would also like to congratulate students who have participated in leadership development through competing in regional and national and international competitions, bringing home golds, silvers, and bronzes, ribbons, and awards. We are incredibly proud of your accomplishments and recognition of excellence that it brings to yourself and to our college. Thank you again, and congratulations to all of our candidates for these accomplishments. And now we come to the real reason we are here today, the presentation of our certificates and degrees. Our presenters today are Dr. Amy Morrison Goings, College President, Dr. Elliot Stern, Vice President of Instruction, and members of the Lake Washington Institute of Technology Board of Trustees. The graduates' names will be announced as they approach the stage by four members of our esteemed faculty. Our readers today are Professor Jim Howe, Computer Network Security Faculty Member, Professor Joe Nelson, Science Faculty, Professor Phil Snyder, English Faculty, and Professor Pamela Jeffcoat, Medical Assisting Faculty. President Morrison Goings and members of the Board of Trustees, I present to you the candidates for associate degrees, certificates, and diplomas. Marshals, please escort the associate and certificate candidates for graduation forward. Ricardo Martinez, fitness specialist, personal trainer. Ronald Spencer, fitness specialist, personal trainer. Robert Promsat, computer security and network technology. Matthew Vitato. Computer Security and Network Technology. John Marshall, Computer Security and Network Technology. Anjan Pariyar, Computer Security and Network Technology. Anis El Ghazawi, Computer Security and Network Technology. Gerardo Farias, Diesel and Heavy Equipment Technician.
Michelle Sweeney, Multimedia Design and Production. Andrea Conant Mockle, Design. April Lady, Design. Marie Davis, Digital Gaming and Interactive Media. Nicholas Hereford, Auto Repair Technician. Christian Martinez, Auto Repair Technician. Mamata Kalu, Computing and Software Development. Ghislaine DeLay, Computing and Software Development. Michael McLean, Computer Security and Network Technology. Nathan O'Brien, Computing and Software Development. Samantha Blea, Computing and Software Development. Michael Buckley, Auto Repair Technician. Amanda Simpson, Business Technology. Jacob Blake, Auto Repair Technician. Benjamin Blake, Culinary Arts. Drew Esselstyn, Culinary Arts. William Peters, Mechanical Design Technology. <laughs> Rosalia Smulan, High School 21. Alicia Delgado, High School 21. Nelida Santoyo, High School 21. Lizette Sandoval, Occupational Therapy Assistant. Elise Salazar, dental assistant. Gypsy Hernandez, medical assistant, pre-nursing DTA. Michael Blanco, auto repair technician. Blake Keys, design. Philip Spencer Carver II, pre-nursing. Stephen Kratz, high school 21. Ileana Amorim, high school 21. Charlene Graves, high school 21. Tanya Vasquez, High School 21. James Lawrence, High School 21. Mona Chatfield, Baking Arts. Yeah. 
Julia Duos, Baking Arts and Culinary Arts. Silvana Wade, Culinary Arts and Baking Arts. Tanae Dillard, Culinary Arts. Anandita Roy, Culinary Arts. Erin Greider, Baking Arts. Roman Ferrando, Culinary Arts. Stacy Sturchy, Baking Arts. Alexis Wooten, Baking Arts. Laura Holmes, Culinary Arts. Maria Milosolovich, Biology. Jewel Jasmine Cadado, Computing and Software Development. Nick Abley, Culinary Arts and Baking Arts. Angela Suschik, Pre-Nursing. Cameron Kutsera, Auto Repair Technician. Deshawn Saunders, Auto Repair Technician. Brenda Clayton, Medical Assisting, Medical Billing and Coding. Lacey Clay, Medical Billing and Coding. Tomomi Hirai, Pre-Nursing DTA MRP. Kathleen McClanahan, Social and Human Services. Summer Hendrickson, Social and Human Services. Monica Shoemaker, Social and Human Services. Albert Chor, Auto Repair Technician. Tanya Mount, Occupational Therapy Assistant. Melinda DeBolt, Occupational Therapy Assistant. Regina Anson, Occupational Therapy Assistant. Anna Cho, Occupational Therapy Assistant. Thomas Schiller, Digital Gaming and Interactive Media. Zori Greer, Digital Gaming and Interactive Media. Ashley Luce, Computing and Software Development. Jenna Martin, Computing and Software Development. Louisa T. Wilson, Early Childhood Education. Radha Pedapati, Early Childhood Education. Nithya Balasubramanian, Early Childhood Education. Sadna Kashal, Early Childhood Education. Nidhi Sharma, Early Childhood Education. Malti Dodia, Early Childhood Education. Aparna Day, Early Childhood Education.
Caitlin Ball, Early Childhood Education. Haling Pu, Early Childhood Education. Brandy McBurney, Early Childhood Education. Victoria Lewis, Early Childhood Education. <laughs> Susanna Flood, Early Childhood Education. Regina Gaynor, Early Childhood Education. Elena Spector, Early Childhood Education. Linda Hrapova, Early Childhood Education. Catherine Pettit, Medical Billing and Coding Professional. Heidi Dwelly, Medical Assistant. Lorna Fisher, Medical Assistant. Daniel Walcott, Architectural Technology. Paul Dujardin, Civil Design Technology, Mechanical Design Technology. Jeffrey Powell Lyson, Computing and Software Development. Evan Fairchild, Civil Engineering Technology, Mechanical Design Technology. Terrence Wright, Mechanical Design Technology. Lavinia Dancy, Business DTA. Heidi Aleman Cappuccino, Pre Nursing. Olga Tofen, Accounting. Sarah Akbarpur, Information Technology, Applications Development. Sarah Ninjoki, Pre Nursing. Stephen Flieger, Welding Technology. Azam Khan, Accounting. Ali Hassan Amjad, Business Technology. Amir Khan, Accounting. Faith Simongo, Pre-Nursing. Seth Ames, Fitness Personal Trainer. Grace Ann Herrick, Pre-Nursing. Mark Lavrentiev, High School 21. Kendra Lee Howard, Medical Assisting. Mina Ulmer, Medical Assisting. Jamie Schroeder, Medical Assisting. Brittany Stewart, Medical Assisting. Sainabu Seka, Medical Assisting. Griffin Weil, Machining Technology. Peyton Dean, Machining Technology. Timothy Williams, Machining Technology and Welding. Grant Oney, Machining Technology. Alberto 
Pantoja Erospe, Welding Technology. Daniel Espahel, Electronics Technology. Claudia Sanz Barajas, Electronics Technology. Shakim Taladia, Electronics Technology. Nahum Romero, Electronics Technology. Cody Hoops, Electronics Technology and Photonics. Andrew Gaines, Electronics Technology. Ramon Orozco, Electronics Technology. Stephanie Norby, Business Technology. Misty Windsor, Medical Assisting. Eileen Scott, Business Technology. Lee Lohr, Business Technology. Shaheen Kazimpour, Business Technology. Shaoli Deng, Business Technology. Cosmina Bartels, Business Technology. Walid Al Said, Business Technology. Esther Dianda Morales, Medical Assisting Office Administration. Jana Eshrian, Miss Medical Assisting. Sunira Rajbanani, Medical Assisting. Elijah Dugar, Welding. Michael Fahrenbach, Welding Technology. Mary Sidorov, Medical Assisting. Jessica Brown, Medical Assisting, Billing and Coding. Sophia Ilchuk, Business Technology. Samuel Kundrick, Medi Mechanical Design Technology. Darian Akana, Architectural Technology. Lewis Shannon, Architectural Technology. Amber Nicole, Funeral Service Education. Shannon Williams, Funeral Service Education. Sabrina Bradley, Funeral Service Education. Bridget Turner, Dental Assistant. April Johns, Dental Assistant. Laura Minifee, Dental Assistant. Karina Ramirez, Dental Assistant. Estefany Ramirez, Dental Assistant. Daniela Inahosa, Dental Assistant. Alicia Valencia, Dental Assistant. Jorge Portillo, Dental Assistant. Jennifer Thompson, Environmental Horticulture. Sasha Spears, Funeral Service Education. Taylor Willie, Funeral Service Education. 
Madeline Wiley, Funeral Service Education. Brooke Flayton, Dental Assistant. <laughs> Natasha Birch, Dental Assistant. <laughs> McKenna Jensen, Dental Assistant. James Pearson, Diesel and Heavy Equipment Technician. Jamil Lakhani, Diesel and Heavy Equipment Technician. Atana Dimitrov, High School 21, Diesel Heavy Equipment, Motorcycle and Marine Power Sports. Brennan Daggett, Diesel and Heavy Equipment Technician. Ernest Jackson, Diesel and Heavy Equipment Technician. Rudolf Oppermann, Computer Security and Network Technology. Florina Romero, Accounting, Microsoft Office Certification. Riley Lorenzen, Auto Body Technician. Daniela Georgieva, Human Resources Management and Business Technology. Jenny Davies, Human Resource Management. Carla Cruz, Human Resource Management. Steve Perna, Human Resources Management. Gayatri Ramadas, Human Resources Management. Austin Gibbs, Human Resource Management. Lander Rennick, Human Resource Management. Marianne Gerges, Human Resource Management. Denise Hentz. Human Resource Management. Taylor Hackett, Dental Assistant. Shelby Ann Marie, Dental Assistant. Katherine Anderer, Dental Assistant. Arlie Ruiz, Dental Assistant. Ali Rubino, Dental Assistant. <laughs> Katrina Kakalesic, Physical Therapist Assistant. Sandy Enbaum, Medical Assistant. Felice Arana, Health Sciences. Chase Throckmorton, Welding Technology. Ralph Palazzo, Environmental Horticulture. Megan Welsh, Design. Madeline Gelfon, Design. April Gabbert, Design and Digital Gaming and Interactive Media. Jonathan Barris, Digital Gaming and Interactive Media. Kara Foff, Digital Gaming and Interactive Media. Makalina Tausinga, Pre-Nursing DTA MRP. June Alexander, Accounting, Associate of Applied Science degree. Gayatri Chaudhary, Public Health, Certificate in Community Health.
President Morrison Goings and members of the Board of Trustees, I present to you the candidates for bachelor's degrees next. Marshall, please escort the candidates for bachelor's degrees forward. Nicole Vogel, Dental Hygiene. Como Rao, Dental Hygiene. Lena Ung, Dental Hygiene. Madison Robinson, Dental Hygiene. Alina Shushchik. Dental Hygiene. Anna Nakul, Dental Hygiene. Catherine Mundell, Dental Hygiene. Alicia Gardner, Dental Hygiene. Patricia Saunders, Dental Hygiene. Sally Jo Skinner, Bachelor of Applied Science in Public Health and Certificate in Community Public Health. Carla Kringle, Public Health and Epidemiology. Tamara Simonik, Bachelor's of Applied Science in Public Health and Community Health. Paige McDaniel, Bachelors of Applied Science in Public Health and Epidemiology. Samantha Grandy, Bachelors of Applied Science in Public Health and Epidemiology. Stephen Nelson, Applied Design. Lisa Tanaka, Applied Design. Mari Hashimoto, Applied Design. Hayden Bray, Applied Design. Kathy Lean Martin, Applied Design. Ronald Lewis, Applied Design. Gavin Lund, Applied Design. Justin Pearson, Applied Design. Alexa McCarty, Dental Hygiene. Alma Bodzai, Dental Hygiene. Kelly Jansen. Dental Hygiene. Anna Mattis, Dental Hygiene. Julia Berkland, Dental Hygiene. Samantha Alford, Dental Hygiene. Madison Fetterspiel, Dental Hygiene. Jessica Hanley, Dental Hygiene. Christina Purdy, Dental Hygiene. Lauren Stevens, Dental Hygiene. Simone Jarvie, Dental Hygiene. Kyoko Wilfong, Dental Hygiene. 
Sarah Noiser, Dental Hygiene. Laura Mulvar, Dental Hygiene. Natalie Drake, Dental Hygiene. Noel Olinger, Dental Hygiene. Carrie Porter, Dental Hygiene. Lilius Ojola, Dental Hygiene. Santino Enriquez, Applied Design. Brandon Dennis, Applied Design. Tanit Makarapiram, Transportation, Logistics, and Supply Chain Management. Nikhil Maharaj, Transportation, Logistics, and Supply Management. Abu Bakar Rajab, Transportation, Logistics, and Chain Supply Management. Joel Anderson, Transportation, Logistics, and Chain Supply Management. Clinton Carbonell, Transportation, Logistics, and Supply Chain Management. Amir Al Jamal, Transportation, Logistics, and Chain Supply Management. Jim Kim, Transportation, Logistics, and Supply Chain Management. Mark James, Transportation, Logistics, and Supply Chain Management. James Gordon, Transportation, Logistics, and Supply Chain Management. Brianna Hills, Transportation, Logistics, and Supply Chain Management. Brenda Terry, Transportation, Logistics, and Supply Chain Management. Mary Weaver, Transportation, Logistics, and Supply Chain Management. Tyler Davis, Transportation, Logistics, and Supply Chain Management. Lydia Tam, Applied Design. Susan Foster, Applied Design. And Amanda Pelly, Applied Design. President Morrison Goings, members of the Board of Trustees, on behalf of the amazing faculty at Lake Washington Institute of Technology, I present to you the class of 2018. <laughs> Candidates, Candidates, the degree or certificate you've earned today is evidence of your accomplishment. It also symbolizes your renewed responsibility to be a productive and critically thinking citizen in our society. The last part of our ceremony is the turning of tassels. Following this, we will ask guests please to rise and remain next to your seats for the recessional while the stage party, deans, faculty, and graduates exit. But first, candidates, please rise. Tassels 
are worn on the right side of the mortarboard at the beginning of the ceremony. It demonstrates your commitment to obtaining your education. At the end of the ceremony, the tassel is moved to the left side to show you have successfully passed this milestone. Congratulations on your accomplishments. Graduates, now you may turn your tassels. Audience, uh, we ask you to please remain seated or standing for the recessional as we go through. Thank you and congratulations to the class of 2018.